Now, back here in the U.S., lawmakers have been after that popular viral video app TikTok for a variety of reasons. The Chinese company has been a target of national security and data privacy concerns, as well as a CFIUS review. One more thing they're concerned about, the fact that TikTok allowed children starting at the age of 13 to make in-app purchases. That is something that Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn highlighted in a letter to TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, saying that the app is quote, paving the way for Chinese government to gain unfettered and unsupervised access to our children's lives. Well, on Tuesday, TikTok responded by upping that minimum age now to 18. Let's find out if that's enough to appease lawmakers by welcoming in Senator Marsha Blackburn. Senator, thank you for join me, joining me. I have to ask, are you happy with their response? I'm pleased that they have changed the age. That's an important first step. Uh, having these children uh, streaming these videos, buying these emojis that could be converted to cash by the recipients, it is just inappropriate. We want to protect children online. We want to make certain that apps are age appropriate. So that was a step. And you mentioned the other concerns that are there for TikTok. We're going to continue to work with them. When you look at the facial recognition, uh, the profiling that is done, the concerns on national security, how the Chinese government, Beijing, listen, you can't tell where their commercial sector and their military sector begin and end. They are all one and the same. And China is determined to build a surveillance state that is not only on their people, and certainly we have seen this used on the Hong Kong protesters and also on the Uyghurs. So we know what they would do to us. And when you think about the profiles that they are building of these children and how they would use that 10 or 15 years down the road, it is of tremendous concern to us. So, Senator, now that TikTok has responded and raised that minimum age, is that enough for you to recommend it? Or do you have some other bigger concerns about the Beijing we, government using that? We have other concerns. We're going to continue to meet with them and work with them. And I look forward to sitting down with their leadership team in the coming days. Do you agree that TikTok should be under CFIUS review? I think that it's appropriate to sit down with them to have this discussion and then to decide if these companies like the Faces app or TikTok, if it is something that should be under CFIUS review, it is the right question to be asking. You know, Senator, having discussions with leadership is a great way to start. How do you, though, take it to the next level and prevent data in the U.S. and TikTok to be sent overseas to the Beijing government? Well, and one of the things we discussed today in Commerce Committee was having privacy legislation and data security legislation here in the U.S. You know, you have GDPR, which went too far on privacy there in the EU, and you have California looking at doing their own legislation, but it's time for the U.S. to put a basic federal privacy standard on the books. And this is something that online consumers want. They want the ability, Taylor, to protect their virtual you. They want the ability to secure their identity online. So we had a tremendous hearing, great bipartisan participation. And one of the things I really liked, the entire panel of expert witnesses, they were all female. I think this is one of the reasons for that is because women are so concerned about the privacy issue. And I did listen to that. Uh, I, so I did see that and I want to address that. And as we move on to talking really here about big tech, one of the tweets that you had earlier Earlier this week was about Google specifically in censoring conservative voices. Uh, what are your yes. facts to support that? 
when you look at the research work that has been done, and we've done a good bit of this work in our office, other groups have done this, and you look at the groups that are censored, the posts that are censored that go left of center and the posts that are censored that go right of center, and you see that those that are right of center are censored much more heavily than those from the left. And there are plenty of numbers out there that you can look at for this. Indeed, I think one of the significant things as we've worked on this issue, you had a CEO of one of the tech companies say, you know, their employees are in California and they bring their personal opinions into the workplace. It's their world view. And this is something that needs to be a neutral platform if indeed your social media and your online connections are going to end up being the new public square. Senator, I would love your thoughts on political ad policies. You have Facebook on one side, Google somewhere in the middle, Twitter not allowing any political ads on their platform. What do you think is the right choice? Well, I have to tell you, I think that political speech is free speech. And one of the things that I have said so regularly is that I may not agree with someone's opinion on something, but I'm going to defend their right to put that ad up there. Of course, we all want ads to be truthful and to be factual. And many times you will see ads that have documented and sourced what they have actually in their political ad. And I think that also we have to keep in mind that our system of governance, a democratic republic, has been well served by having robust, vigorous, respectful debate from a two-party angle. And that serves our nation in the cause of freedom well. And as we make these discussions, have these discussions about what is going to transpire in the virtual space in relation to political speech, in relation to religious speech, what we want to do is make certain that it's fair and that we are protecting individuals' right to free speech. You know, Senator, I did listen to your Commerce Committee hearing this morning, and you talked a lot about data privacy and, frankly, having an FTC or a national yeah. regulatory body overseeing mm -hmm. this. Why do we need a national regulation? Uh, the reason we need to have a federal basic privacy standard is because of preemption. And one of our witnesses made the point that when you have state legislation and you have 50 different state uh, policies, the Internet does not know where the state line begins and ends. So therefore, uh, you need to have that regulation that is going to be a federal preemption. One of the witnesses also pointed out that they had used their iPhone, which had an area code from one state, to make a purchase from a retailer in a second state to send it to someone that lived in a third state and she said, and oh, by the way, she was domiciled in a fourth state. So think about that. And the onerous regulation it would be to try to have four different states handling protection of that data as it came through a server or a system or a retailer in their state. Now, when you look at this, maybe the credit card processor was even in a fifth state. Maybe the entity that is going to ship that product, that do the fulfillment, is in a different location. Right. So federal I have to preemption ask, is important. Right. I do want to ask if consumers would have the ability to access and delete that data under a federal law. You know, this is one of the things we're looking at, basic federal protection. And as you heard, all the witnesses except one today agreed that the FTC is the best federal agency and giving them the tools they need to do that job and the authority they need to do that job. There's one witness that said they would want to look at that more closely, but indeed there needed to be 
a federal agency to oversee it. Basic privacy legislation needs to include one set of rules for that entire ecosystem with that one regulator, the FTC. Then we discuss some of those protections around sensitive data, which would be things that you would want to opt in and give that explicit consent in order for that to be kept or to be shared. Or then for non-sensitive data, like shopping histories, things of that nature, you would have the ability to opt out and yeah. to disallow the retailer or the uh, online transactional unit to share that data. Right. Senator Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee, thank you for joining us.